Hey, welcome to another edition of Tim's Vinyl Confessions. I'm Tim Durling. Thanks for uh, tuning into this episode. On this one, this is going to be a long one. I'm going through my Kiss CD collection. I've never done uh, that before. We've lots of Kiss episodes, but never my CDs. And it was always kind of, um, not daunting, but I knew it would be a long episode. But it is kind of fun to go through because I've got a mix of um, original CDs and uh, the 1997 remaster series. I got into Kiss in 93, which is really, really late. And uh, there's an album in particular that was responsible for that, which I'll get to. So... Most of my uh, KISS collection was bought in a flurry between 93 and 94, although I did replace a few of the CDs with some of the remastered ones, so I'll get into that. Uh, the first KISS album is one such example. Originally from 1974, this is a 1997 remaster. It's actually a Canadian Columbia House issue. You'll find that the uh, regular CDs, the original issue CDs, don't have the actual backs on them, the way that the remastered ones do. Now there wasn't much inside the first Kiss album to begin with, so basically it's all here, and uh, I might add, easier to read than the back of the record. This is what the CD itself looked like, and there's a write-up inside the CD tray on all the remastered by a guy named Robert Conte. Now, if you watch Three Sides of the Coin like I do, he was a guest on there, and he talked in depth about the KISS remasters. Um, and if you're into that sort of thing, I highly recommend watching that episode. And also, I know who Robert is because he wrote the foreword on a book that I just love called The Art of Atari, which is about Atari 2600 uh, game box artwork. But that's another story. Second KISS album, also 1974, also a remaster, Hotter Than Hell. And this is just a U.S. edition. Again, there wasn't much, you know, because they were just starting out, they didn't have all the goodies inside the record. So the CD pretty much, you know, puts it out. Whatever was there reproduces it. There were no lyrics at this point. There's the disc itself and the write-up about the album. So now you're going to see the difference between the you know, non-remastered ones. Uh, this one's one that I've had ever since 94. The third Kiss album from 75, Dressed to Kill. No logos around here, it's just black. This is a Canadian Columbia House version. So as you can see on the back, very basic. And the uh, back of the booklet and whatever information is there, which is pretty much all that was written inside of it. And the CD itself, just a plain. Now I like the fact that it was, you know, Mercury put these out, but they were, they did use the honor of the Casablanca logo on these early Kiss albums. Uh, and also 1975, of course, Kiss Alive. This is a remastered edition. The, uh, originally, Kiss Alive and Alive Two came in the double CD cases, so I had those, and then I changed them for slim cases, and then eventually I got the remastered version. This is a Canadian Columbia House version. And all the famous things that came inside the, the Alive album are here. All of the pictures, the gatefold reproduced there in a smaller form, the silly little notes that each of them wrote. I think they're silly. Uh, disc one, and then it flips over to disc two, and the right. And next up, this is a special one. This was my very first Kiss CD. So, 93, at some point I decided maybe I'll try to get into KISS. Or, uh, you know, part, a lot of me wanted to, and I, I knew a good place to start was Destroyer. So, this is my very first KISS CD. It's the same one I've had uh, for all those years. This is just a regular, standard U.S. edition, pre-remastered, as you can see here. So it doesn't reprint like the lyrics to Shout It or to Detroit Rock City. It doesn't have the Kiss Army logo or anything like that. And this is uh, the Polygram CD. This is those issues of the Polygram CDs where the sides of them are very, very smooth. And I, and I will say something else about this album. If you're very familiar with this album, you know the weird stuff that uh, ends the album off after Do You Love Me fades out. I had no idea that was there. I'd listened to it a few times, and as soon as Do You Love Me faded out, I'd take the CD out. One afternoon, I was sort of laying back on the couch, like kind of half half asleep, half napping, 
and I had this on random, then that weird noise came on. It startled me. I didn't know what it was. Well, I'm still not 100% sure. Now, at this point, this is where the originals would come in if the originals were issued on CD. Uh, I, I wish they would, just for completion's sake. I know all it is is the first three albums. Now, they, in the mid-2000s, that uh, Mercury did put out something called Kiss Chronicles, which is the first three Kiss albums in one package. Discogs calls that the CD version of the originals, and even that's hard to find now. Uh, next up, Rock and Roll Over, one of my favorite uh, early Kiss albums. This is a Canadian issue. And um, so not as much in this as there would be in the remastered version. The back of this, just like the record, is the same. It's just like the faces are upside down. And uh, the CD itself is just your standard Polygram CD. 1977 Love Gun. This is a Canadian CD, not a remaster, although I do like how they at least used the proper font for the titles. None of the uh, the reprinted stuff, the, none of the, the crowd shot, the, the Bloody Kiss logo, and certainly no Love Gun, and that's the, the disc itself. However, I also have another version of Love Gun that came out in 2014. Uh, deluxe edition that Universal put out. There's a few of these, like Brian Adams Reckless, Bon Jovi, New Jersey, and they did a fine job with this edition of Love Gun. So there you go. You can see right away it's deluxe edition. So two CDs. The first disc is just the regular album. Second one has some demos, an uh, interview with Gene Simmons. It's got some really interesting stuff on it. So there's the Bloody Kiss logo I was talking about. And there's the two discs. I'll take the booklet out of here. So that's an original sort of rendering from Ken Kelly of the artwork. This forward is kind of cool. It's done by Joe Elliott of Death Leopard. The two bands were actually on tour together at that time. Reminiscences from the band uh, and producer Eddie Kramer about the songs. And uh, what's cool about the disc two is um, there are some songs that ended up on the Kiss album. There are some that didn't at all. Uh, some they took parts of and made other songs. But the Love Gun teaching demo, uh, track four on disc two, is really interesting. And it's Paul essentially showing, I don't know, I'm assuming it's Ace, another guitar player, how to play the song because the song at that point only existed in his head. He knew how he wanted it to go, but he had to show somebody else. And that's, that's not something you get to hear very often. So I'd welcome more of that. 1977 also brought Alive 2. This is a Canadian remastered edition. And uh, being the remastered edition, it also reproduces everything that, uh, that you'd want in a live to The Evolution of Kiss, all the pictures. The coolest gatefold ever, even in a small form. That I just, I love that picture so much. And um, this disc one and disc two and Robert's write-up. Uh, 1978 double platinum, the first of many Kiss best ofs, because the originals was more of a it was just the first three. This isn't embossed like the record is. This is a U.S. edition that's actually BMG Direct, which those CDs tended to look exactly like the retail versions, except they put this bar, this box up here. So 20 songs, relatively short songs. They are able to fit everything on one disc, and this is not a remastered edition. Now, of course, 1978, we're into the Kiss solo albums, collectively known as the Kiss albums. Uh, this first one... My good buddy Matt got for me in England. This is Gene's solo album. There's a special price sticker on it that I've never seen anywhere else. Uh, this pretty much looks like the same CD you would have found in North America, but it is from the UK. The disc itself looks way different. It's got this cool design on it. Other than that, it's, it's pretty much the same. Next up, my favorite of the four solo albums is Ace's album. This is a regular U.S. edition pre-remastering. Kind of hard to see the name there, but Ace Freely. Of course, they dedicated the albums to each other. 
which is funny because they were not getting along at this point. And uh, that's your information there. And that's the disc itself right there. Now an album I really don't like, but I have to have it because um, that's part of the collection. It's Peter's solo album. This is a remastered edition. I've never been able to enjoy this album. I've tried. Now the cool thing about the solo albums remastered is that it also reproduces a lot of things that were inside of it, like the four, there's, you know, collect them all, uh, credits and reprints of what I think are honestly the silly posters that came inside of these. And uh, they all, in the vinyl form, they all linked together. And it's not the easiest thing to find um, nowadays. And probably my second favorite of the albums, I really like Paul's album. Uh, Paul Stanley's solo album is the closest to what a Kiss album in 1978 would have sounded like. And this too is a remastered edition. And oddly enough, um, the two remastered solo CDs I have are also the, the only two I have on vinyl with the posters. I need to find Gene's and Ace's albums on, on vinyl with the posters. That just occurred to me. Those are the two I have on CD. Uh, 1979, one of my favorite Kiss albums, Dynasty. This is obviously a remaster. You can see down the side. And this is a Canadian edition. But that's reprinted from the vinyl itself. So is all of this. This is what the actual vinyl, the label on the vinyl looked like with that picture. And reprint of this as well. This poster came inside of it. It's very cool. There is the disc itself and there's the write-up. So I mentioned earlier that uh, Destroyer is where my KISS collection started and I remember getting it home and I would always have to rearrange all my CDs. I didn't have nearly as many as I do now. But I remember thinking, one KISS CD just doesn't look right in the collection. i got to start building on this. And there was one that I could always find for about 10 bucks new, and it was this. So I went ahead and bought this the very next day. This is Unmasked from 1980, a pre-remastered version, a U.S. version. And yeah, not much inside of it. And the disc itself. Next is the much maligned music from The Elder. I'm one of those wackos that will actually stand up and say I, 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 I like quite a bit of this album. Um, such a weird time. I, don't, I wouldn't have liked it if I was a Kiss fan waiting for a new album to come out in 1981 and that was the album. But um, so what we have here is a remastered version, Canadian version of The Elder which is significant because it restores the song order to the intended order. It doesn't, it no longer starts off with the oath. It starts off with fanfare to just a boy. Um, and of course, it's got all the uh, graphics from the original album, the gatefold, the table there. The CD itself and the write-up. Uh, 1982, as I was nearing completion of getting all the KISS CDs, I happened to come across a Japanese import of this in Fredericton of KISS Killers. Now, I knew about this. This was a best of album that came out in certain territories, not in North America, uh, with a horrible band photo, even though that's my personal favorite lineup of the band. I wish they'd actually done an actual album with uh, these four. But anyway, uh, the selling point behind this is that there were four new songs that didn't appear on it didn't end up in appearing on any other kiss albums and were um really hard to find for many many years that says mercury also um i don't think it has a casablanca logo but uh, the record came out in casablanca four good new songs actually all sung by paul stanley which have since appeared elsewhere um that's what the back cover looked like very strange art design and like most Japanese CDs, it has a write-up on the band in Japanese and then the lyrics in Japanese and English. Um, admittedly broken English, but it was, um, this was a nice surprise. I'm guessing somebody ordered it and didn't pick it up. 
So now my favorite Kiss album, or at least tied with Dynasty is my favorite Kiss album, is also the one that when I first bought it, because the remasters hadn't come out, I had to settle for the non-makeup cover with Bruce Kulick, which makes no sense at all. So when the remasters came out in 1997, the first one I made a beeline to get was this, Creatures of the Night with the actual the right cover. 1982, this is a Canadian version. And I cannot say enough about this album. If you're not a Kiss fan, but you love hard rock and old school metal, I know a lot of people that, that, that really don't like Kiss that still like this album if you're inclined to heavy music. So this has all the lyrics inside of it. Oddly enough, the non-makeup CD is now kind of hard to find, but for years it was the only one you could find. There's the CD and there's the write-up. All right, next up, of course, 1983, Makeup's Off, and Lick It Up is the album. This is a U.S. version, a U.S. Columbia House version. Very stark, much like the album itself, just black and white and not much for graphics. Just what's needed, I guess. And there's the disc itself. Next one to show you is the last of the remastered ones that I have, 1984, Animal Eyes. Um, this is a Canadian edition. No, it's a U.S. edition. By this time, uh, even the original CD pretty much reprinted everything that was in the record because they were being made at the same time as the records were coming out. So all the pictures, uh, even though this is the remastered edition, it's really not all that different because the, the CDs were kind of um, having everything with them now, the lyrics and all the pictures. So there's the CD itself and there's the write-up. I'm intrigued by the choices that record labels made for the design of their early CDs. I've got one to show you here. Uh, 1985 Asylum. This is a U.S. edition. That's what it looked like on the side. And with a small version of the album cover here. And my Rush Power Windows CD is the same, even though I have a Canadian Anthem Records version. Uh, I think they just modeled it after the Mercury version in the US, because it too has the same uh, setup. And they must have been doing it for all of their artists at the time. So this pretty much reprints whatever was in the album. It doesn't quite have all of these pictures. There was like film strips of them but it puts one of each for each of the band members and the lyrics and credits. And this is the first one of the KISS CDs to show you that has that atomic design that Mercury was using. It's kind of atomic because of what's in the middle here. Next up, 1987, Crazy Nights. I've always um, thought this was a cool concept for an album cover. I think it also would have worked very well when they were in makeup. Obviously they weren't at this point. And this is a U.S. edition. And this has pretty much everything that the cassette and the record would have had, the lyrics and credits and the, the inside photos and the Chikara symbol, of course. And there's the disc itself. Next up, and I, I made fun of this album for years, but it, it really, it probably still is the best single disc kiss compilation to grab in a hurry 1988 smashes thrashes l hits look at that does that look like an ampersand to you that's an l anyway i always thought this was a kind of a silly album cover this is uh this is a u.s edition on bmg the bmg direct marketing and um actually this is the second cd i got the first one i got was a canadian edition and if there's any other kiss fans out there I'd be interested to know if you had a disc like this. The beginnings of each of these tracks were cut, cut off and the, um, the track would fade out and then the very beginning of the next song would come on and that would be your track. It was like it was sloppy cutting off of the songs. So in order to hear the beginning of the first track here, you had to listen to the completely end of the, the last track. It was, like I said, it was just sloppy editing on the part when they were dividing the tracks up. Very strange. This one doesn't do that. Um, and I've never had another CD that ever acted like that. So they've got all the lyrics to all the songs here, the year they came out, and for whatever reason, it's the one and only time they spelled rock and roll all night, and I-G-H-T. That's what the disc itself looked like. So by now, CDs were 
beginning to overtake cassettes. They were really pushing the idea that you could get a lot of music on one album. And some bands took that to heart. Kiss did in 1989 with Hot in the Shade. There are 15 tracks on this, and personally, I think if they'd have whittled it down to a 10-song album, it would have been an awful lot better. There's a lot of filler on here, but there's some good stuff, too. Uh, Forever's from this. That gave them their first, their only top 10 single out of makeup. And this, too, is a BMG edition. It's U.S. I like the disc itself. That's pretty cool. Mirrored sunglasses on the Sphinx there. And, of course, the band's wearing sunglasses here, too. This was... Uh, last album that Eric Carr appeared on, tragically. All the lyrics and credits. Trivia about this, Tommy Thayer, who's currently their lead guitar player, has co-writing credits on uh, Street Giveth, Street Taketh Away, uh, Betrayed. So a couple of songs on here. So Tommy Thayer's tenure with Kiss starts back here. Next up, a great, great album, uh, a, a comeback for them as far as being a really heavy band, 1992, Revenge. This is the one and only time they utilize Hugh Syme for the artwork. It really looks like it if you look at the, the White Snake album covers around the you know late 80s and uh, Bon Jovi, New Jersey. A lot of the heavy rock bands were using them. The, and of course, I mean, Rush has worked with them forever. Uh, this is a Canadian version, Columbia House version. Best they ever looked out of makeup. I think that's such a cool image for them. Just black leather. This was Eric Singer's first album with them, who's in the band now still, in makeup. And uh, lyrics and credits, and a great album. A really good album. And this is what the disc itself looked like. Now we're up to the album that got me into Kiss, and a lot of purists will maybe scoff at this, but um, fall of 93, I heard an awful lot of this album, Kiss Alive 3. Uh, Matt played this all the time at his apartment, and um, we'd be getting ready for classes, and I just remember realizing that I liked a lot of Kiss's songs. They all appeared here. I love the way the band plays them. Um, Bruce Kulick, Eric Singer, I mean, this is a dynamite lineup as well. Now, the sticker, the hype sticker I have on this actually came off my cassette. I didn't wasn't able to save the one for the CD. I used to save the hype stickers quite religiously. I don't do it so much anymore. I do like this album cover a lot. This is a U.S. edition. And I love the lineup of songs on here. This is just a special, special album for me. There's some cool stuff in here. Cool packaging. Uh, reprints of old tour books. Uh, reprints of old backstage passes. Lots of old photos. And um, also the Kiss Family Tree. And, of course, the track listings that uh, list I Was Made For Loving You was coming from the Dress To Kill album, which, that even made it to the remastered versions uh, in 2014. They never did fix it. In 1994, um, I consider this part of the Kiss catalog, even though they're only marginally on it, uh, they basically did a tribute album to themselves. It's called Kiss My Ass, Classic Kiss Regrooved. It says a bizarre assortment of artists, not nearly the artists that were hyped, uh, but there's some interesting material in here and some really good material and, in my opinion, some really bad material. In different countries, it came out with different back covers. Obviously, I got a Canadian edition here, the Canadian flag in the background. You'll notice that is not Ace's makeup. There was some legal legalese going on there. And um, this came with, okay, on this side... It advertises the other KISS albums that are available, and it actually has some KISS fanzines mentioned on here in this little sheet of paper. This is also when they were hyping their history book, the one where the spine broke on everybody's copy that I've ever heard tell of, so I never bothered sending away for it. Some tattoos in here, some KISS tattoos, and uh, lyrics to all the songs, oddly enough. The disc itself mirrors the album cover, it's got the Canadian flag on it, and it's a dedication to Ace and Peter and also to Eric Carr from Gene and Paul. So not the next Kiss album, but it was the next Kiss release. And uh, of course a lot of things are happening at this point, but in the meantime I'll come across something that has a copyright date of 1994 on it, but is actually from 1976. I don't have a lot of bootlegs and I actually forgot I still had this. 
It's called Rock and Roll Night. This is just a concert from Toronto in 1976, um, put out by a company called Big Music, and it's actually for bootleg, got some really good packaging. The packaging is better than the quality of the concert itself. It's not a great recording. So I don't get into these bootlegs that much. And of course it's got, you know, uh, pictures from the Dynasty era, which is later than the actual concert featured. But like I said, some, some work was put into this. And the disc itself has a cool photo on it as well. So the next official thing to come out is an album that I love and I like to, 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 to say to anybody, look, you might not like Kiss, but listen to this album and you really can't tell me they can't play. This is Unplugged. Uh, MTV Unplugged, this, of course, that's got Ultra Kiss, as I call it on the front, six member Kiss. That was only for a couple of songs, but it was still pretty cool. And this came out in early 1996. This is a US edition, and I love this album. Um, by now, they're advertising, they had their uh, convention tour in 95, and they're advertising all kinds of merch here that came with it. There's still an advertisement for Kiss Tree. And I love, the, I love that photo. I mean, I, that's just a cool photo. Gene looks as happy as I think I've ever seen him. Um, yeah, that was, a, that was a cool, that would have been a cool show to be at. And some uh, photos from there too. It was, uh, of course, it was released on home video too as well. But the big news in 96, of course, is that this led to the inevitable reunion with Ace and Peter and the makeup and... Uh, I'm really happy to say I was already a KISS fan by this point. I wasn't bandwagon jumping, but boy, was it exciting. We, a bunch of us went to see them in Montreal that year, and it was so much fun. But to celebrate that concert, they put this release out called You Wanted the Best, You Got the Best. Now, I referred to Robert Conti earlier. I would highly recommend watching that Three Sides of the Coin episode because he goes in depth talking about how much cooler this should and could have been if he'd had his way. But he wasn't the band. He was merely a consultant. Now this is in a red tinged case. Uh, that's not what this looks like. The big, you know, the big selling point here was they'd unearthed some live material from uh, Kiss Alive and Alive 2, including the version of Room Service where Paul redubbed his vocals. I don't care. You can't convince me otherwise. And Robert so much has admitted that. So that's his right up there talking about this. But this wasn't at all what uh, it could have been. Could have been a lot cooler. As it was, you know, knowing that I had tickets to see the concert, uh, it was still fun to listen to and, and put on. Uh, I'm still not sure why they put an interview with Jay Leno on the end of it. They must have had some sort of deal. There's the CD itself, which actually has a reprint of one of the uh, Marvel comic books. And that's the inner part of it right there. This, too, had one of these... Um, the convention tour, lithographs, or merchandise forms inside of it. So inevitably, the uh, makeup lineups on tour again, and all of a sudden, the non-makeup stuff didn't exist. They, they weren't honoring it, and neither were the compilations that came out, including Greatest Kiss, which came out in early 97. Um, this is a Canadian version, a Columbia House version. It's actually, uh, it's kind of funny because it's on Polytel, which was the direct uh, television marketing for, uh, division of polygram essentially it's ktel and i don't like the track listing on here um like i said it's all stuff between uh, the first album and 1980 and you know they even picked a weird song from unmasked they put two sides of the coin on here and not shandy which was the closest thing to a hit but of course i had to buy it because i i don't know Anyway, there's the disc itself. I do kind of like the cover. Incidentally, this is one of the rarest Kiss vinyl albums ever because it was only ever released as part of the box set, so I'll never have that. Now, the album that the band was working on at the time of the reunion, of course, got shelved for the tour, but eventually, well, it was bootlegged heavily, and it was I think it was supposed to be titled Head, and there was artwork, mock-ups all made for it. Eventually, um, Mercury put it out in late 97 as Carnival of Souls, The Final Sessions. So it's very bare bones release, very bare bones packaging. This is a Canadian version. And just it's just the way it worked as a KISS fan. Because of when I got into the band, this was actually the first new release that I got from them. This is a heavy, heavy album. This was their attempt to go grunge. I really don't wouldn't call it a grunge album except for maybe a couple of jeans more sludgier songs. There's some good stuff on here. Um, 
it really doesn't sound much like Kiss. Now, the big reunion album came out in 1998, much hyped, and I gotta say, I was buying into the hype heavily. Psycho Circus, it's got a lenticular cover, and it's hard to actually display what it looks like, but uh, the title song is one of my all-time favorite Kiss songs, and because it was so good, I said, this album is amazing, and I do like a good half of it, but it really does sort of run out of steam by the time you get to the second half. And of course, Ace and Peter's participation on this was very minimal. And I caught this tour too. Uh, enjoyed it, even though there were some mistakes made. Um, I do remember that uh, Ace ended a song on the wrong chord. Uh, Detroit Rock City, uh, Peter kept slowing up or slowing down, speeding up. And, um, you know, it wasn't enough to detract from the fact that it was a fun concert, but they weren't the well-oiled machine that I saw in Montreal just two years previous. There's the disc itself and more lenticular wonderfulness with that. And also, um, there were these, uh, some stores stocked, not necessarily music stores either, but like Spencer's and places like that had these vid a videotape that had the Psycho Circus video in 3D and then not in 3D with a pair of 3D glasses and this bonus CD, and I'm assuming there was one with each of the band members on them. This is worth it because it's got a song In Your Face on it, which appeared on some international versions. It's a decent song that Gene wrote and Ace sang. So there you go, a companion to my Psycho Circus disc. I don't actually have the box set that came out in uh, 2001. Uh, Matt has a copy of that. You see that on our box set episode. I actually had a chance to buy that last year on vacation. I really wish I would have. It would have been 60 bucks, which is not bad. Um, but in uh, 2002, as was the custom when a band would put in a box set, then the record label would put out a single disc sort of distillation of it. This is the very best of Kiss. And this is the first compilation besides the box set, to actually honor the non-makeup years, even if it is only for a few songs. This has uh, Lick It Up Forever and God Gave Rock and Roll to You too on the end of it. I also like the fact that it's got New York Groove on here. And the, in the Inner Slave is pretty cool. It's a shot of the band from the Paul Lind Halloween special. Another photo of the band and the track listings and what albums they all came from. That's the disc itself, that's kind of cool. And there's a, another newer photo of the band there. In 2003, a uh, bizarre Kiss lineup because Ace was gone, Tommy Thayer was in, but Peter Chris was still there, or back, actually. Um, it was very, very confusing for a while there because Eric Singer was going back and forth between Kiss and, and uh, Alice Cooper and actually met Eric in 2000 when he was with Alice. But they did a symphony uh, album in Australia with the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra. Now it came out on DVD and it came out on a double CD. This is the version that I have. Now it's called Alive 4, but there's something else called Alive 4 too. Uh, the double disc CD has a black cover. Other than that, it looks the same with the blood running down it. This is on Sanctuary Records. And what's significant about this, the reason I bought it is because the last track is their cover of the Ramones' Do You Remember Rock and Roll Radio? from the Ramones tribute album that was out at the same time that also uh, Metallica did a song from. Photo of the band, very unique lineup there. The show was divided up into three parts. First I'll show you this, the CD itself there. So with Beethoven with a combination of all the makeup design. So act one was just the four piece band. Act two was the Melbourne Symphony Ensemble. So they did Bath Going Blind Shandy. That's what appears here. There's other songs that appear in the double disc one. And then act three is with the full orchestra. They do a lot of Destroyer. They do most of Destroyer because that kind of lends itself to that. So we'll stick with the live thing here. In 2006, this came out, this Kiss Alive box set. And this has Kiss Alive, Kiss Alive 2, Kiss Alive 3, and the previously unreleased, it was all ready to be released and then it was pulled, the Millennium Concert from Vancouver, New Year's Eve 1999. This, uh, this gave us a chance, that we, if we didn't catch any of the shows, to hear Peter and Ace um, working their way through the likes of Lick It Up, um, Heaven's on Fire, and I Love It Loud. So it's a cool little box set. It's made up like, to look like a road case. 
and so of course it's got this booklet with it that basically has the same stuff in it that the um, the original CDs would have, even though the Millennium Concert was kind of its own thing. And I'll be honest with you, I was kind of um, I was kind of tuned out of Kiss for quite a few years because they were putting up more and more merchandise. Some of it was getting really cheap. But uh, when the Kissology DVDs first started coming out, I thought, okay, this is quality product. This is worth picking up. And I was finally, I was so happy to find out the Kiss were actually doing a brand new studio album. And it finally came out in 2009, Sonic Boom. This was a Walmart exclusive at the time. And this contains three discs, as a lot of bands like Journey and Foreigner were doing as well. Disc one, brand new album. Really good album, really strong album. Disc two, modern, as of 2008, 2009, versions of classic Kiss songs, so they could license them without having to pay Universal. And it's, they sound pretty good. Uh, and then there's a bonus disc that's got not a complete concert, but uh, part of their show in Buenos Aires. There's the... And the booklet, of course. I don't have this on vinyl. It was only available on vinyl for a short time. I hope they, they redo it. That would be a good record store day exclusive. It's got all the lyrics and credits inside of it and uh, some different photos. I Yeah, I actually really like this album. Some of the songs dated back quite a few years, but they, it's kind of like Van Halen's A Different Kind of Truth. It, they finally presented them in, you know, really good versions. And fairly quickly, they followed that up with another studio album in 2012. This is Monster. This is a Canadian version. They're on back on Universal at this point. Another good album. Uh, I have no problem with this album whatsoever. I hope they do another one, but I don't think they will. I actually do have this one on vinyl. Um, just photos and uh, credits. There's the disc itself. And I actually have uh, two versions of Monster, two CDs of Monster, because they put out a, another version called the International Tour Edition. Now, normally I could care less about something like that, but I, the main reason I got this is because it's got a bonus track on it right here, right now, which is a pretty decent song. Other, other than that, it's got the same, the, the booklet has the same info as the one I just showed you. Also in 2012, kind of a bizarre experiment, uh, they put out, this is Kiss Destroyer Resurrected. That's actually the original cover that uh, they had for Destroyer, which used their previous outfits that they used in the Alive, so they changed it. And you probably know that whole story. This actually is from uh, Argentina. This version I have, it's on Mercury. Bob Ezrin remixed the album. Uh, to me, it doesn't sound all that different, except that uh, he, they included as a bonus track Sweet Pain with Ace's guitar solo on it, because the guitar solo that appeared on the released version was actually uh, session guy Dick Wagner. There's the Shout It Out Loud Kiss Army that originally appeared inside of Destroyer. There's the lyrics to Detroit Rock City. And so, that's a picture of the band and Bob Ezrin. So this was an anniversary edition of Destroyer. So there's a long write-up in here from Bob Ezrin. Of course, there's the original cover right there. I like the CD itself. It's got a really cool design on it. Honoring the Casablanca Records. Uh, label they were using for albums when this originally came out. Next thing I got uh, another tribute album. It's got nothing. Well, Kiss isn't on this, but uh, Mitch Lafon, who does uh, Rock Talk with Mitch Lafon, is a, a journalist. Was also one of the original uh, co-hosts of Three Sides of the Coin. Put out this uh, tribute to Kiss for Cancer Care. So I ordered a couple copies. One for me. Thought I'd give one to Matt. It's called A World with Heroes. This is a two-disc compilation of. Everybody from uh, members of uh, Firehouse, uh, Honeymoon Suite, Great White, Cinderella, Tesla, uh, the original guys from Fraley's Comet, um, White Snake, like all kinds of cool people on here doing versions of Kiss songs that range all the way to the first album, all the way up through Monster. So there's some really cool versions of some of the songs on here. I, I enjoy this uh, tribute a lot, actually. Tribute albums are, you know, some are good, some not so much. So there's a write-up on who appears on what. The other thing that's really cool about this is the discs themselves were made to look like the old Casablanca logo, but just enough difference so that, uh, you know, there was no litigation. 
In 2014, that's the year that the remastered Love Gun came out, but they also put out a really good double disc compilation. This is called Kiss 40 Decades of Decibels. This is a really good collection. I'd recommend this to a newbie Kiss fan, actually, because it's got all the songs that you think you've ever heard from Kiss. Sometimes they're in uh, live versions or demo versions, but they're all here. And for the most part, the major ones are in, in the versions that you know. What I like about this, it's got everybody that's ever been in KISS. Even Mark St. John, who only appeared on Animal Eyes. And, uh, of course, it goes through the years. The pictures and album covers are pretty much going along with what um, was going on with them at the time. We'll skip ahead to here in the 90s. Um, and, of course, that's the spider they were using on the Monster Tour. It's a good compilation, well done, well thought out. That's the disc one, uh, disc two. In 2016, uh, KISS had done a Vegas residency and they commemorated that with this, KISS Rocks Vegas. I have this on vinyl too, it's the only vinyl I have that comes with a DVD. This is on uh, Universal and Eagle Vision. It's a good set list. They do Creatures of the Night, War Machine, like anytime you can do stuff with Creatures of the Night, I'm, I'm cool with that. There's also a bonus uh, acoustic section on the DVD and then a CD of the concert itself. So there's the their bus. The discs themselves are very, very cool. And there's the booklet that comes with it. That would have made its own cool album cover, actually. There's Gene's bass, there's Punisher bass, lots of pictures. Yeah. Oh, that's a, cool, that's a cool picture right there. And I got one more thing to show you. Well, actually two more things, but one more thing that's strictly KISS. Uh, it originally came out in the UK in 2017, and in 2019, Kiss World was released worldwide. The best of Kiss, yet another Kiss compilation. This is not a bad one. My main gripe is that Forever's not on it. But uh, there you go. And Matt pointed this out. I didn't realize that the R in Kiss World is merely a backwards S. This came out on Mercury, and this is a Canadian edition here, even though it's, it's just got a... like they just imported it from the US. It's not a bad compilation. It's got Shandy on here, so I give him extra points for that. There's not a lot inside of here, and I have yet to get this one on vinyl. I got one more thing to show you, and I actually thought about this as, as I was starting. Um, just pardon me for one minute. In 1980, 1999, um, a movie came out that was based on four guys wanting to go see Kiss in concert in 1978. Of course, I'm talking about Detroit Rock City. I just realized, I remembered I had the soundtrack. This came out in 1999 on Mercury, and this is a Canadian edition. It was a fun movie, and um, it's not just Kiss on here, but, you know, Shout It Out Loud's on here, Detroit Rock City, uh, The Donna's covering Strutter, and a new track, which I'm pretty sure was their attempt to replicate what Aerosmith did from the Armageddon soundtrack, and it didn't work. But, you know, it's got Van Halen on here. It's got some good stuff on here. And like I said, it was a really fun movie. I enjoyed it. I think it became more of a cult classic than an actual uh, well-known movie, but there you go. It is part of the KISS story for sure. So that is a look at my KISS CD collection. If you've got any weird versions of KISS CDs, uh, comment below or if you're or on Facebook, post pictures underneath. I'd love to hear what you got that's, that's kind of different than these. Thank you for watching this edition of Tim's Final Confessions.